Hello, Gareth here. So it's my third day at the COVID recovery facility and I'm just watching the sunset. And I feel, I feel pretty good today. I've got this strange clicking in my ears when I speak, but yeah, I'm just gonna have to live with it. So hopefully it will go in a few days time. But anyway, I've had a fairly good day. I can show you my uh, dinner. Here you go. So um, this is my Japanese dinner. So I've got rice on top of it. There's seaweed. I've got some vegetable thing here. And that's a mushroom, maybe a shiitake, a Japanese kind of mushroom. Then I've got these, which are bamboo shoots. So that's very seasonal. Then I've got maybe fried chicken. And then here I've got this strange thing called gobo, which is maybe burdock root, maybe burdock root. So anyway, I love it. I love gobo. It's a, it's a very long, thin vegetable, root vegetable, and uh, tastes delicious. So anyway, I've been painting and I did this painting and I'm, I'm quite happy with this and one of the reasons I'm really happy with this painting is it's quite a challenging, it's a really challenging scene for me to paint all the shrubbery and yeah it's just a difficult scene. Normally I like painting scenes like mountains like over there and sunsets and sea scenes things like that but this kind of countryside scene is really challenging for me and um, and maybe you don't really need to hear this because you know already but if you are struggling with your painting then do persevere I mean I'm not sure if I should say that or not I've been doing it 20 years and yeah so if you've been doing it 20 years okay maybe we've narrowed the crowd down a bit now then persevere but what I'm trying to say is when I first started doing this series I mean let me show you another one I did on the spot now this is embarrassing this is so embarrassing look I've got no shame that's what I did on the spot and it's a different part it's actually this tree this area here I went past this bridge and on the other side of it, I saw this scene and painted this and uh, yeah, well, I'm going to change my advice. Persevere or don't persevere. Like this, if you're really into the subject, then maybe persevere if the passion is there. If you're not, then it's a good idea just to move on to something else. So either way is OK. So if you've got the passion, keep going because you might have a breakthrough. And if you're not really passionate about it, and to be honest, I wasn't so amazingly passionate about this at first, but I persevered anyway. And luckily I did make a breakthrough. But I would say if you're not that passionate about it, probably don't persevere. I guess the reason why I did it is because maybe I needed the challenge. So, yeah. So if that made sense, I'm happy. I'm not, I'm not sure it did, but there you go. Uh, but I'm really happy with this painting. Um, and yeah, just another thing is these little, little bits and bobs here that I think really helped to make this tree beautiful. That's titanium white, an opaque paint and a little bit of yellow. I think that worked really well. And another thing that's important if you're into watercolour painting, they do say don't overwork it. And I was recently listening to a guy saying, well, there is one artist who does overwork his paintings, but it actually looks good. And um, I won't say his name because I can't pronounce it. But uh, anyway, that's what I did here. I painted it and then I went over it again and I took some paint out and I added some white paint here and I kept doing it and doing it until I got this 
kind of what would you call it not scrappy but slightly kind of yeah like a, it's got a kind of variety of textures and a little bit of color not too much color and I perhaps should do a bit more but no I think it's enough but just to let you know you can overwork it a little bit sometimes yeah so yeah I'm really quite happy with this especially with the um, shrubbery and this bit I'm really happy with that I'm just like wow that really worked out well I like my little figure here that's supposed to be me with my backpack and my easel and and this is what I took with me when I went there actually so yeah I'm quite happy with that and there's one more I did and this one yeah what I did with this one is I went a bit wild with these rays and I'm fairly happy with that sometimes you have to um like after you paint a picture, you have to go away from it for a while, sometimes a year or two, and you come back with um, a slightly different opinion. I think the previous painting was better. I think that's a winner. Uh, there's something nice about that. It's got a nice, crisp, clean feeling as well. Yeah, I can't believe it. Uh, this one, I don't know. But I like it because there's something quite fun, a bit kind of over the top about this painting. And and yeah, basically, I'm at that point now where I like to take things a bit beyond normal, go a bit more extreme. <laughs> well, in a slightly conservative way, I'm still too much of a safe painter, perhaps. But yeah, just to push it a bit. So I'm I'm glad when I look at this painting because I've really pushed it quite a lot. And I think it's interesting. I think the light's interesting. Maybe this and this is really good, but this bit is a bit a bit boring. It needs, I don't know, something happening there, which isn't happening yet. But there you go. And uh what else? Yeah, so uh, in my previous video, I did mention about this bottle top. So I'll try and keep this concise. Basically, I was in a rush that day and I needed a water container. And I I couldn't use mine. Um, yeah, and I'll tell you why maybe on a, another occasion. Uh, but anyway... I was in the kitchen and yeah, I just couldn't find a water container. And then I saw my wife's water container, which she uses for her protein shakes. And I thought, well, I'm just filling it with water. She won't mind. And I never seemed to be able to get away with anything. You know, there's this phrase um, like, nice guys end up last but they should add to that you know but sometimes nice guys also always get caught out when they're not so fantastic and that's me <laughs> so sometimes nice people are nice people because they're not very good at being non-nice people yeah they can't seem to get away with it and anyway what happened is when I was on this bridge yeah Actually, I think it wasn't this bridge. This is the old bridge and there's another bridge right next to it, a more modern one that I was on, which is higher up. And so it's a little bit behind where this figure is standing. And basically, I got my gear out on top of this bridge and I got the water container out. And maybe I was too enthusiastic, but when I took the top off the bottle, uh, it came, it basically just rolled out of my hand, then it bounced off the end of or the side of the bridge and then fell down onto this bit actually. And yeah, oh dear. And then um, I walked around looking for a way to get down to the river and an old woman told me about a route 
and she told me it was the easiest way down. It was not. <laughs> anyway, I'll show you that video in the near future and you can have a good laugh. And basically, I went down this uh, metal stairway that hadn't been used in a long time. It was all overgrown. Then I got down to where the reeds are. I had to wade through the river. I had to eventually go back into the river and I wore my sneakers this time. The river in certain areas is really slippy. There's flat areas where it's so slippy. Luckily, just those areas. Anyway, eventually I made it to this bank and I looked for that bottle top and couldn't find it. And then I went up here and I could go here and then I could get past this uh, bridge. And then on the other side, there's another bank. And then I found a really easy way up to the top. Really easy. So, yeah, <laughs> maybe that old lady was having some fun with me. I don't know. But it made for a good story. It made for a good video. And I'll be showing that soon. Um, but I always like to have a good painting to go with it. And now at least I've got one. So, yeah, there's some paintings up here that I'm going to do new versions of. So this is terrible. I kind of like this. This is good, but this is bad. So I'm going to be doing this one again soon. And um, I love this bit, the water. Once again, I like that. And I think if I get this shrubbery right, that could be quite a nice painting. But like I said, this was a really um, difficult scene for me. But in a way, I think, and look at this one. This one was a good one. I'm quite happy with that. Uh, but anyway, um, what I'm happy about with doing all these paintings of this river is I used to go on these trips by car and they were often next to rivers. And the rivers were below you, like a small kind of gorge or I don't know what you call it, or gully. And you could never really fully see down or get down there. But it looked very interesting because you'd have these beautiful trees and then all this very rugged, rocky shore. And then, of course, the, the winding river. And I just would think to myself, I'd love to be able to get down there, but it did look a bit dangerous. You know, it's not gentle countryside like you get in England. It's, you know, you wouldn't want to slip or, yeah, you have to be careful. It's very rugged kind of terrain, but at the same time, look very beautiful. And eventually I managed to do that thanks to uh, my wife's bottle top. Um, because I wouldn't have gone down otherwise, I think. But anyway, when I got home, I thought, OK, I won't tell her. Maybe she'll forget, you know. So not so nice guy, right? But I thought I just don't need a tough time today. Um, but anyway, she came to me, I think, and said, oh, have you seen? Blah, blah, blah. And yeah, I was honest. And then she was mad with me. But, you know, that's the way it goes. And I did, I did actually offer to buy um, a new one because fair is fair, right? But but she said, no, it's OK. <laughs> <coughs> but I would have done. And perhaps, to be honest, I should, I should maybe buy her something, right? So maybe, yeah, I should do that. OK, so that's about everything. So tomorrow, hopefully I've got something else to show you oh yeah and i'm reading my book on gogan so what can i say well basically now he's gone to tahiti for the second time he's about 50 something years old and um let's go over here and um uh, oh yeah can you see that sunset maybe not it's quite nice okay so and basically, in some ways, he's fulfilled his dream, which was to basically go somewhere like a paradise, Tahiti, be a full time painter, have his own house. And um, yeah, he's basically achieved that. But he's 
he's miserable uh, for good reason though I mean he's got syphilis so he's really not well um, he's got a very badly damaged ankle from a fight and it never fully recovered um, it never healed properly and that gave him circulation problems and later on that led to heart attacks and and so life is pretty tough for him and he is in some respects all alone an Englishman comes and um, he did admire Gauguin a lot but sadly um, Whistler has become his new fan and so um, he does stay for a short time and he even tries to copy Gauguin a little bit but um, Gauguin's not the most aimable not the most friendliest of people and also at this point in his life he's basically he's past it uh, because of health really and so this English guy who could have become another disciple again or become a disciple again which would have maybe it would have re-energized Gauguin and you know it would have been like possibly a new a new breath of fresh air for him it didn't happen sadly very sadly and the guy leaves and goes off to follow Whistler which is really well good for Whistler right um and then yeah what else money wise he should have been okay and this is what I sort of like about Gauguin he actually made a lot of money from selling some paintings while he was in Tahiti this time and the money got sent to him and then he went and had this very expensive house built actually two houses and instead of like just having a small place built and then saving the rest of the money he went to the bank and he got an enormous loan and basically put himself in huge amounts of debt in one way I love it because it's so incredibly outrageous and stupid and sometimes you just want to see that in life you know what I mean because sometimes life is so boring and normal I suppose it can also be violent and terrible luckily that's not my life but sometimes the stupidly extravagant is something I don't see a lot of and so I kind of like, in a way, I'm like, well done for doing that. It's something that I hope I never do myself. But it is something I sort of admire, that kind of stupidity, to be honest. It just makes life a lot more interesting, if that possibly makes sense at all. Um, we need people like that. And Gauguin was that kind of person, you know, and it's something that I really like about him. And so he's massively in debt. Um, and yet, in many respects, he was a successful artist. And almost he was like success, blah, 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 successful in his own time. Not as, not as successful as he will become. But he was selling paintings and he was making some good money. But he just, he was just bitter. But to be honest, if you've been an artist, you you know, you put your soul out there. You really do. And you can be crushed. And, you know, many artists can become very, very bitter, you know. And so I can understand that. Um, and uh, sympathise a bit with him. But anyway, there you go. So he kind of, yeah, he kind of made it. I mean, basically, this was um, Van Gogh's dream and he wanted to, to share it with Gauguin. He wanted this, like, small group of artists who would live in the south. He was thinking maybe the south of France, maybe, or maybe he was possibly thinking a tropical island. Gauguin was. And that they would all paint and, you know, there'd be beautiful scenery and 
this wonderful primitive life untouched by the corrupt Western world. But they were already too late for that, actually. And, um, you know, they'd be free to explore their full creativity, you know. And then the, their dream was that they'd live in this place where it was cheap to live, but they could send their paintings off to Paris where they would make huge amounts of money, which would come back to them, you know. And obviously, I think they were thinking maybe there'd be quite free and easy women around there, you know. Um, and uh, yeah, Gauguin definitely is a rascal in that area, I can tell you. <laughs> but anyway, now he's he's even a little bit past it for that as well. But anyway, that's enough about Gauguin uh, for today, for today. But amazing person, amazing person. So anyway, hopefully tomorrow I'll have another painting for you. Apologies for all my little mistakes in these videos, but I'm just doing it completely off the bat. Um, yeah, and uh, anyway, I'm feeling a bit better and I'm going to eat my lunch. No, it's my dinner and uh, bye for now.